Hey, it's a third video about coaches in three weeks. This was really not what I intended to do when it came to news videos on this channel, if I'm being honest. But it makes sense given the way the videos have actually gone. We started with a video about Jose Mourinho, we moved to whether a specific scenario, in that case it was mid-season firing, is helpful, and we end here. The culture of firing coaches in general in European soccer. I believe there's a problem there, so let's talk about it. Obviously, Italian club Napoli sacking of Carlo Ancelotti inspired me to make this video, but this is actually something I've been mulling over for a long time. I want to start with some background on me so you know where I'm coming from. Like most kids in the US, my connection to sports came through playing and watching them with my dad. And my dad wasn't a soccer fan. He loved football and basketball and UCLA, etc., but not soccer. I only got into soccer when I became friends with lifelong soccer fans and players when I was about 15. Meaning, even though now soccer is my favorite sport to watch and talk about these days, I still view it through the lens of American sporting culture. So I've always looked at things that are normal in European soccer culture, like what we're discussing today, and questioned them. I've grown to understand most of those cultural differences, a lot of them even make sense to me like the differences in how Europeans do season tickets and the myriad of differences in terminology. But this is one I never quite understood. The revolving door of coaches and managers at top flight clubs. Now I do comprehend why the bottom team in the table would be desperate. Relegation has the potential to absolutely tank a club financially and spell doom for the entire business. I get it. But for every other team in the table, why are I mean, just why are they so desperate to jettison managers? Take Carlo Ancelotti at Napoli. He's won the league titles in four different countries, including Italy, and claimed Champions League gold in 2014. He's clearly an accomplished manager, regardless of what you think about the state of the teams he was at. Uh, winning the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich isn't exactly Leicester winning the Premier League now. Ancelotti took over Napoli last year after his stint with Bayern Munich. In his first season in Naples, Ancelotti led his squad to a second place finish in Serie A, finishing behind Juventus, but you can't say there's any shame in finishing one place behind the Italian soccer equivalent of the villain from the Austin Powers movie. He's earned Napoli a Champions League spot and seemed to be getting the club closer to a title than they've been in a long time. But four months after he began his campaign to consolidate his terrific performance in season one, he gets canned. Napoli sit in 7th, 7 points off even a European spot and without a league win for nearly 2 months. But let's think about what we're saying here, Napoli is in 7th and they've booked their spot in the last 16 of the Champions League just the other day. They still have tremendous talent, and with Serie A not even halfway through the year, there's still a lot of time to turn things around. So why did Napoli pull the trigger so early on a manager with a long and illustrious track record? Well, this is where we come to the big cultural difference between the American sports I grew up with and the European sports I came to love. Now, this is just my perception here, so if you disagree, head down to the comments section or find me on Twitter, at GA and let's discuss. I absolutely think people can have a different read on this than I do, and I really want to hear all of your opinions. Let's say you're a fan of the LA Rams. The Rams sucked for years, then moved to LA and were bang average for a couple seasons. Slowly, they build a roster of great players and hire themselves a stud young coach they believe in. Suddenly, they're contenders and make a run to the Super Bowl, coming up just short against maybe the greatest organization in the NFL's history. Now, the next year, they've struggled to find that same level of success. Teams have changed their game plan, they've started to figure things out, maybe the Rams have suffered a few injuries to key pieces, and all the other teams in their division have gotten better. Most Rams fans would feel like the previous year was proof positive of what can be done with the team they have, and even if they can't reach those heights the next year, the ability is still there, and all of it is better than where they were just a few years is better than where they were just a few years ago. In short, I believe American fans judge their teams based on the low end of what they've done i.e. the Rams are an 8 or 9 win team this year, but they can be a 12 or 13 but they can be a 12 or 13 win team next year and it's better than being a 4 or 5 win team like they were a couple years ago. The European culture on the other hand goes the opposite way. That same Rams team, or in this case Napoli, would be slammed up and down for not returning to the same heights they did last season. 
While they're still average, and since in European soccer you have multiple competitions in which you can succeed, they're even better, they're still not as good as they were last year. European fans measure their team at the height of their success. The best you were is the new standard that you should now be every year going forward. So by Napoli's reaction, you would be forgiven for thinking they were dumped out of the Champions League and are sitting 18th in the league or something like that. In reality, the same Napoli team that really overachieved by finishing second in Serie A last year is now deemed to be underachieving based on the standard that we all agreed they overachieved to reach. Should Juventus be judged by that standard? Yes, they've won Serie A eight years in a row. They've earned that standard. Napoli has won the league twice in its history, and its last league title came 20 years ago. Just because they finished second once doesn't mean they've earned the same standard Juventus has earned. And it may not just be finishing second once. Napoli has come in second multiple times over the last few seasons. They can't quite climb the hump to get past Juventus. But the point still stands. We just talked a couple days ago about Spurs firing Mauricio Pochettino. Slightly different situation, but the point is the same. Spurs had just made a Champions League final and had finished in the top four of a Premier League that had quickly become overrun by money that Spurs did not have. But their fans immediately began to hold them to the standard of a team that routinely makes Champions League finals. They are not Real Madrid, they are not Liverpool. They should not be held to the standard of Liverpool and Liverpool should not be held to the standard of Real Madrid until they earn that standard. Now it sounds like I'm contradicting my own video from just earlier this week where I said we have to trust front offices and organizations to make the right decision when it comes to firing coaches mid-season and that's still true. Maybe Carlo Ancelotti wasn't instilling the culture Napoli truly wanted. Maybe he pissed off the president of the club, I don't know. But I do believe if the sacking was influenced by the fact Napoli hasn't returned to the heights they reached last year, despite the fact it was just four years ago when they finished in fifth, 24 points off the lead, it's a mistake. Teams should be judged off the average, not the highs, not the lows. Personally, I don't believe Ancelotti should have been sacked. I don't necessarily believe Pochettino should have been sacked either. I don't believe teams should sack their manager based on heights they've only achieved once. If you disagree, let me know. I'd love to have this conversation. Like I said, I believe that, that all of you could have different reads on this than me, and I'm absolutely open to being wrong. If you check the comments section in my XFL video, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Subscribe to GA Sports for more content. We'll see you next time. We appreciate you.